Anyone? That means we're all family. Amen. So let us stand to our feet as the musicians give us a little melody. And we're going to greet one another in love. Amen? Amen. So let's stand to our feet and move around and greet somebody. Thank you. 
Let us pray together. Father God in heaven, truly, we are just grateful, Lord, that you have blessed us to make it safely through another week. We thank you, Lord, for putting in our minds to be in the house of prayer today. And we thank you for safe traveling mercies. God, we pray and ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit in this place, in each of us, Lord, that we may worship you today in spirit and in truth. Lord, we ask for a special anointing on your manservant, Elder Wright, Lord. We love him. We don't want to see him, though. We want to see Jesus Christ and him crucified high and lifted up, that we may all be drawn unto you. This is our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are, are having a uh, focus on family, as you know. And we do this uh, every week. We pick someone from the congregation and we, we go in alphabetical order. So your time is coming. But today, <laughs> today, come on down, our treasurer, Sister Diane Jenkins. This, this. Give it up. Amen. Oh, where are you going? <laughs> How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. I'm blessed. Well, you know, um, I uh, I sent uh, Sister Jinx a text the other day and uh, to what she was the folks on the family and uh, how could we pray for her and she sent me a text back and I didn't get it. So um, so you're going to have to tell us what's on your heart right now. Okay, well, I have a long list, but. To make a long story short, um, as in Deuteronomy 5, verse 6, I pray that my family and friends will love the Lord with all of their heart, all of their soul, and all of their might. I pray that all of my family and friends will be saved. And if they're not in a Bible-based church, I pray that the Holy Spirit will send them to one so that they will hear the truth. And I also pray, <laughs> this is a, has been a prayer for me for the last year and a half, that God will allow me to regain ample employment soon. Uh, I kind of feel like Job, <laughs> in a sense. I haven't lost any of my siblings, but I think when you lose a job, you lose a lot. And this is an opportunity that he has given me to get closer to him. And I do get emotional because I do love the Lord. Amen. So as I grow uh, in his word and when he feels the need for me to find employment, then I'm sure he'll send me back. But that's my deepest prayer. And then my last prayer, but not least, is for my church family. I pray that we will continue to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That God will allow our church family to be revived. And that we will have a fellowship and relationship with one another that is unlike the other churches that are around the St. Louis area, that we will bond together as a family outside of worship service and just social events, that we will come to each other's need regardless of the issue what it's going through Amen. so these are my prayer requests and these were from the heart so i'm asking god and you all to come together and pray with us amen amen, amen. you mentioned the job story and of course you know how that that old job thing got started you know god said do you know my servant, Joe? He's all right. He's good. So I can imagine the Lord saying, 
Do you know about serving them? Yeah. Amen. And the good thing, you know how the story ended? Job got restored ten times more than he was. So, hang on. It's going to be good. Um, you also mentioned about, about our church family coming together and maybe having a revival, and maybe an, an upper room experience. Well, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We'll be telling you more about that later. All right. Um, if, unless you've been on Mars somewhere, uh, you know that we've had a real tough week. What's happening across our country? And we could not have um, a, a prayer time without praying for our country and our nation. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask uh, for two volunteers. I want one person uh, to come up and say a quick prayer to something like uh, to help us to not see each other in the wrong way. I want one person to pray the prayer that policemen will not see black men as their enemy unless proven otherwise. I want one person to come up and pray that prayer. And then I want another person to come up and pray a prayer that um, black people will not see the police as someone who wants to kill them. That's not the case either. Two arms don't make right. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible says, be angry, but sin. Okay. Can I get two volunteers? One, one, okay. To pray on behalf of our policemen that they will not see black men as their enemy unless proven otherwise. And another one to come up and pray that we as black people will not see the police as our enemy. Can I get someone to pray that prayer? situation that I've experienced with police at 15 years old. I know the, I know the circumstances and it's been hard for me to sort of, when things happen, that one wrong gonna make a right. It, it's been hard even right now and, and when it comes to mind that I have a problem with, you know, forgiving the circumstances or having empathy on the situations at hand. But uh, I'm glad I have God in my life to, uh, I, I don't burden myself with it. You know, I try not to speak out where the person next to me or in the room with me, where my opinion has anything to do with what the reality of what life really holds, because I'm still here. Amen. Amen. I've experienced it. I do pray that God will intervene in all manners of this situation and how the situation has come about is to where it, I mean, I mean, it's off the chain. Believe me, you know, and me. As, as, as being an old dinosaur for what life is held for people, street people, you know, I'm glad to be where I'm at. I'm glad to be, I want to be home at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night in my safe spot where I'm safe. And God, I know God is, has his outstretched hand and his head of protection around me. I pray for those who need that. I pray for those who need to have a mind for that. I pray for those who don't have satisfaction, get satisfaction, and they seek it through God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, we're just pausing to pray for those officers, Lord, who may view black men as their enemies. Lord, we pray that there will be a change of heart. That they will give individuals the opportunity, Lord, to present themselves. Not as enemies, not as animals. But as one for whom Christ has died. It's easy for us to read a scripture in Matthew 5 and then we are to pray for our enemies. 
But when we feel like we're being hunted, that's really when the rubber meets the road. We do pray for those officers, Lord, their families that were gunned down. They are grieving just as much as the black families are grieving. In order for this nation to heal, God, it's going to take divine intervention. There's a song where the artist says, God, why don't you do something? And you respond, I did, I created you. Each of us must take action, Christ-like action. So we pray, Lord, for healing, that you will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, before we kneel, I'd like to extend an open invitation for anyone who has a special issue that's on their heart, if they would like to come forward as we kneel. can't make it in this world by yourself. God is here for us. All he asks is that we give our hearts to him and ask for the Holy Spirit. If there's anything on your heart that's pressing today and you want to seek the power of the throne, I'm going to ask you to come forward as we do.
that was at home, take away all his stuff, he'll forsake you. But he didn't. In fact, he got strong. And he was rewarded for that by being restored tenfold. It took a minute. It didn't happen immediately. But at the end of the day, he was more than restored. And better, stronger, wiser. So I'm, I'm, I'm claiming that for Sister Jenkins today. And also for, for those who have come forward with special needs. Lord, you know what those are. Because you know minds. You can read minds. You know our hearts. And so I'm going to ask that your will be done in Jesus' name. And also, uh, you heard two special prayers for our community. And maybe even for us. Lord, we know, help us to know, that all policemen are not trying to kill us. And Lord, help the policemen to know that all black men are not criminals. It's a tough thing. Because it's created fear. And at the end time, the Bible says that men's heart will faint from fear. And we have white people who are afraid, black people who are afraid. Help us. We know that we may not be able to change the outcome of anything because your word says that this must happen. But still, help us to be like Noah, to preach until the very end. Give us the power, give us the tools, give us the strength, and we're going to thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.
encouraged by Myron Edmonds on Facebook because I was feeling guilty for being angry knowing that I'm a follower of Christ. Myron Edmonds encouraged the world when he said there's a time for everything. Amen. And there's even a time for anger. But you don't stay there. You let your anger propel you to do something about what's going on. So I'm angry. God says, I have a word for your people. First Samuel chapter 16. If you got your Bibles, your smartphones, whatever you use for the word of God. First Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 23. It's on the screen. First Samuel chapter 16, verses 14. 23. Anybody excited to be alive today? Amen. To be a part of the land of the living? Yeah. Ain't not, you ain't in no cold grave, but you can move your arms and yeah. use your feet and breathe the fresh air that God has provided us. Somebody ought to be excited. Amen. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. I'm reading and you're listening. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. And Saul's servant said to him, Behold now, a harmful spirit from God is tormenting you. 
Let our Lord now command your servant to a before you to seek out a man who is skillful and playing the lyre. And when the mournful spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will be well. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me a man who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. Therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me David your son who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey laden with bread and a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them by David his son to Saul. And David came to Saul and entered his service. And Saul loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David remain in my service, for he has found favor in my sight. And whenever, listen to this last verse, and whenever the harmful spirit from God was upon Saul, David took the lair and played it with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the hornful spirit departed from him. <coughs> Using for our sermon title, Is There a David Anywhere? Let's pray. Father, we're in need of a word. And I don't got the ability to deliver. But you, oh God, you are who these people came to hear. So please remove me. And you speak. You speak to the hearts of your people. Give them what they need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. When you take a moment, Elder King, to think about all that is happening in our world today, you quickly realize that we are living in some evil times. I mean, when you look at all the violence, Sister Harris, and all the hatred we have in our hearts for one another, all of this un injustice, all of this jealousy, all of this envy, and all of these terrorist attacks, when you take a moment to think about these things, you realize something has went awfully wrong with the people of today. When a man can go into a club, Sister Catherine, I don't care if the folks are homosexuals or if they're Christians. When a man can go into a club, taking 50 human beings' life and not only taking their lives, but laughing as he kills them. When a man can do something as cynical as this, you realize that the times we live in it are evil. When black men, let's bring it home, after black men can get gunned down like a wild animal by those who are called to serve and protect us. Yet there is no justice. For the family members of the victims, elder, there is no peace. There is no discipline. There is no accountability. Not even a slap on a wrist. 
just murderers living life with freedom. When you realize that our country can do things like this, you understand that the times are evil. Lighthouse, I downloaded two apps on my phone. And one of them was CNN. And one of them was Fox 2 News. And I downloaded these with purpose. Felt like I was wasting too much time. I wanted to use my time a better. So what better way to do it than praying for the world? And the second reason I did it was because I wanted to stay current in the news. I wanted to be up to date. So when Britain leaves the European Union, I would realize that Bible prophecy is unfolding. That iron is no longer mixing with clay. That Daniel chapter 2 is happening right now. But for some reason, every morning I wake up, I get a notification from CNN that another plane has went missing. No one can find it. It landed somewhere in the middle of the ocean. That another suicide bomber has strapped himself with explosives, walked into a Turkish airport, not only blowing himself up, but taking the lives of innocent women and children. That people who look just like me, skin color just like me, in poor communities just like me, murdering one another, black on black crime, steady happening. And when I think about all these things, the times are evil. But I'm so glad like I was for the word of God. I am so glad that God has instilled a faith in me. Because if I did not have it, surely I will be shaken by these things. The anger I feel inside me, it probably will be poured out in the same manner that the man did who shot the officers. But praise God for his word. Let's get into the word, Lighthouse. Let's get into the word. Matthew 24, verse 12. Look what the Bible says. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will wax cold. And so I'm watching these YouTube videos. I'm up all night knowing I got to be at work in the morning on my phone watching this stuff unfold. And I happen to come across a video of Alton Sterling's, was it his mother or his wife? But that's not important. The person who broke my heart was the son. 15 year old son, Ruby, crying his tears out because he knows he will never get to see his father again on this side of life. He will never get to say, Father, I love you again. He will never get to hold his father. His father will, won't be there for his high school graduation. And all these things are overwhelming to him, and it broke my heart. And I'm thinking to myself, how can things like this continue to happen? The Bible tells us because the love of most will grow cold. Overheard two people talking, Lighthouse. And they dabbing each other up. I mean, they, <laughs> yeah, man, that was hot. And I'm like, dang, he did something successful. But then this conversation keeps going. And he's like, Man, I am so good at cheating on my wife. I'm like, I'm like, really? This is what we dab each other up for now? He ain't stopped there. He's telling his friend, oh, my wife used some money to send me through school. My wife used some money to give me a job. She gave me two beautiful babies. If she found out I was doing all this, she would kill me. She, 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 she would lose her, you're right, you're right, he out of control. She would lose her mind. She would break down. Brother, you know all of this, yet you still do it, not caring about how she feels. The Bible says things like this will happen because the love of most will grow cold. A lot of us, a lot of us, we criticize each other. But we don't realize that we're adding 
we're adding on to what someone's going through. A lot of us, we're using our positions to stump people down. And we think we're better than somebody else. But our love has waxed just as cold. Every time you got some smart to say, Every time you got something bad to say about somebody without cause, don't you know your love is waxing cold? If you can read this with me, look what Paul speaks on at the end of times that will happen. But understand this, you can read it with me. That in the last days, there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I love how Paul is writing this lighthouse when he's speaking to Timothy. He's telling you what will happen in the last days first. And then he finishes off why it will happen. First, this will happen because of this. People will be lovers of self. And they'll do whatever they have to to gratify this dirty flesh. It's because they love pleasure more than they love God. And that's why the Bible says the, the love of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. Because when you love money more than you love God, you will do anything to get it. So though I know drugs are ripping communities apart and they're ripping families apart, I don't care. I'm just trying to make it out here. I'll slam to whoever. I don't care what the results are. I don't care who I got to rob. I don't care who life I got to take. This is what happens when you love money more than you love God. The nation today, Sister Harris, we did not learn from the Israelites' mistakes. The Israelites, every time they put themselves before God, they had to go through some stuff. They lost battles because they disobeyed God. They lost wars because they disobeyed God. In fact, we as colored people should empathize with them because they became slaves. Because they would not obey God. In the time of Noah, look what God says about the people. He's talking about his people, to be honest. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth. And that every inclination of the, of the human heart was only evil. All the time. God's people. God's people. Not even considering God. I'm going to do what I want to do. And when your thoughts are about you and not Christ. Best believe you will become like one of these people and your thoughts will be evil all the time. And look what God goes on a couple verses before this. And he says, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh. So what we have here going on in today's time, Lighthouse, is we got folk who have no spirit in them operating off the flesh. Don't miss the words. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Why? 
for that he also is flesh. And that's why we see, Elder, the sins of man are continuing to get worse and worse and worse. I remember times where we used to be devastated when somebody in our community died. We didn't have community meetings. But now we've grown numb to multiple homicides. It's because the Spirit of God is no longer striving with man. Man, let's be real here. Back in the day, if you liked the same sex as yours, you kept that mess on the down low. Folk was not hopping out the closet like they do today. Folk were raising their hand and professing, I'm just being real. It wasn't like this. Folk stayed in the closet. In fact, I think it was R. Kelly who was trapped in the closet. <laughs> It was like seven songs. One, he was trapped in the closet for a minute because people weren't just coming out the closet like that. But now that the Spirit of God is no longer striving with man, we're beginning to make decisions that are contrary to the Word of God. So not only are people jumping out the closet, it is legal now to marry the same sex. It's because the Spirit of God no longer striving with man. I remember days when you had to, to get shot, you had to do something bad. Like, folk didn't just get shot. Like, when someone got shot, you asked a question, why? But nowadays, you can be in the movies, and somebody step in their shoe. You ain't even gotta be watching a gangster movie, you can be watching Teletubbies. Somebody done broke out shoe? Like, dude, really? You could be getting education in a school or something, and somebody has shoot up the school. Dylan Roof walked into the sanctuary and shut up the people praying. It's because the Spirit of God is no longer striving with man. And Lighthouse, this is the horrific thing. This is the horrific thing about the Spirit of God no longer striving with man. Be, listen to me. When God leaves, immediately Satan enters. It's like because you did this, this is guaranteed to happen. Ebony, you know I know best. When I was bad, because I was bad, mama told behind up. <laughs> Dylan, what would happen if I turn those lights off? What would happen in the sanctuary? It will be immediately dark. And that's what happens when Christ, the light of the world, that he won't strive with man no more, immediately darkness will cover the man. There is no middle ground. There is nothing that happens in between. It's either Christ or Satan. There's no gray area. There's no a little like Christ and a little like the devil. There's no a little holiness and a little foolishness. It's either God strives with you or he doesn't. Come on, preach. Christ speaking to the Pharisees. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me, scatter. He's teaching us that, listen, whatever you do, it's no in-between. What you just said glorify me or it glorifies Satan. The Bible says in Revelation that Michael and his angels for the dragon and his angels. There was nobody else fighting. It was Christ versus Satan. Jesus is teaching us that everything we let, that everything we do, you're either glorifying me or you're glorifying Satan. So watch what you do. 
You got to watch what you say. I think it was James who said, with this mouth we bless people. And with the same mouth we curse people. That all not be. Either you're going to gather with me or scatter. People that go for both teams, Dylan, we call them bandwagon fans. <laughs> Whatever team is winning, that's who I'm claiming. So if I'm in a church, you best believe I got my Christian going on. But if I'm in the world, I can identify with them. But Christ says, gather with me or scatter. Lighthouse, this text hit home. I had to check myself. I find myself too often watching TV shows I love that plant seeds for Satan in my brain. I love them cop shows, Lighthouse, because the cops are so much of a hero. I mean, they're so athletic. They'll dive over cars, jump out of the way of moving trains, and I'm so fascinated. I'm like, yes! This is so good. <coughs> Next scene, both the heroes, both on males kissing. Ah! Oh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Planting seeds and all the watchers head. It's okay to do this. New show out. New show out. Oprah Winfrey Network. Yeah. Called Greenleaf. Planting seeds and everybody had that. There ain't no good pastors out here. Everybody that pastor wanna sleep with all the good looking women in the church. There ain't no good deacons out here. They, they wanna mess with all the women in the church. Planting seeds in our mind that this is what happens in a church. I had to check myself, Lighthouse. I can't laugh at every joke that people say. Because Christ is teaching me that whatever I do from giggling to what I let go in my mind is either building faith or it's choking the word of God. Look at this scripture changed my life. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word of God. And it proves unfruitful. Had a conversation with Albert. Said I gotta give up the PS4. Man, listen, I love that thing. I ain't gonna lie to you, Albert. <laughs> Man, them games look so real, y'all. I really think I'd be in like a new Charger bumping 808s, man. Man, I love that thing. But it takes so much of my time. I told Albert, I said, I got to get rid of it. It's keeping me from God. Can't hang with everybody, elder. Some people keep you from God. Come on now. And it don't matter how much word of God you got in you 15 times, 15 years in the church. Satan says you can pray all you want, but just entertain this for a little bit and I'll choke the word of God out of you. Look at that scripture. <laughs> Do not be deceived. Bad company. Ruins, good morals. <laughs> you can quote scripture, can't you? I know you can. You study a lot, don't you? I know you do. But just hang with this person for a little bit and watch them choke all that studying right out of you. And this is why we can't get it together in the church. Because we're good at praying. We're good at reading the word. But our lives are unfruitful.
because we're entertaining things that are filled with fill. And it don't matter how long you pray. You want to know why the word of God is not working? Because Satan is choking it out of you. Look at the words and it proves unfruitful. We're talking about the word of God. Who has ever said the word of God was unfruitful? <coughs> got to watch that stuff you got in your life. We need to start examining everything in our life. Is this fruitful? Is it building faith or is it choking the word right out of me? What I wear, is it going to build faith in somebody? Or is it going to choke somebody? I might not agree with jewelry is wrong, but if I wear it up here, is it going to build faith? Or is it going to choke somebody? <laughs> you are running well. in your vision. So I got this PS4 in my room. Right next to the big screen. Praying, Lord, let me spend more time with you. And when I get up, the game right there. Should I pray? Or should I play? I'm going to play today. Got to get rid of it, Albert. Had to learn a lesson from Potiphar's wife. Had to go find the same shoes Joseph had on. Joseph, whoo, Joseph ain't had time to pray her out the way. Joseph ain't had the time to study the word of God her out the way. Joseph tied them shoes and got them running. <laughs> You can't have everything an elder said it best is one. Sometimes you just gotta close your eyes. Because there are some things you cannot get out your life if you see it. So I gotta learn that I can't see some things. Because if I see it, it's gonna choke the word of God out of me. It triggers sin in me. So I got to get rid of it. Because this demon ain't getting prayed out if it's right next to me. Had to learn to be like Joseph. That Joseph was an athlete. So I'm starting to be like Joseph, Elder. Woo, she look good and her toes is done. But she don't want to know it. Got to run this way. That's a piece of cake. I'm trying to lose weight. Got to run, gotta run this way. You ain't praying some things out your life. Some demons you got to remove from your vision. You got some people in your life that's causing you not to serve. For, you better. Yeah, run. You got an item in your life that's causing you to better. Come on now. Some of you might have to slide out the way. Might have to juke 
get out the way. Whatever! Listen, Joseph, the Bible says his clothes was in the woman's hand. Now, women aggressive. Maybe she ripped it off of her. But I believe he was running so fast from her, he ran out the clothes. And she called him. You got to learn that you can't pray every demon out your life if it's sitting right next to you. Because all it's doing is choking the word of God, choking your prayers, choking your studying, choking your blessing, choking your righteousness, choking your salvation. You were running well. Who hindered you from the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven. Leavens the whole lump. Just a little bit of that reality show. They're cussing on TV. That's all right. But watch you start mimicking what they say. They're, they're, oh, that's just a sex scene on TV. But watch you start lusting. It's just a little leaven. You gotta cut off every album. I don't know what type of walk we think we in, but this one is serious. It ain't no half-hearted folk gonna win this walk. It ain't no folk who gonna dabble in the church and dabble in the world gonna win this walk. You gotta cut the world off. Anything. Listen to me, because I wanna justify my statement, cut the world off. Because Christ calls us to be in the world, but not of it. So when I say you got to cut the world off, you got to cut anything that influences you to do Satan's will instead of Christ. Because you can hang around sinners and bring them to Christ as long as your influence is greater on them than theirs is on you. But when you got an influence that's overwhelming you, that got you thinking, should I pray? Let's be real. Or should I watch porno? Keep it 100. Should I pray? Or should I go over her house? Be real. Be plain. Should I pray? Yeah. Or should I sing? Mm. If you got anything in your life that's causing your mind to go away from Christ, you better learn to run like Joseph. Come on. Get rid of it. Because when Christ comes to inspect his church, Genesis chapter 6, verse 2. This is right before Christ says, I will not strive for man always. The sons of God saw that the daughters of humans don't miss the language. The sons of who? God. Saw that the daughters of who? Me. Were what? Beautiful. Mirth. And they married any of them they chose. So what's the big deal? They married a woman. <coughs> the sons of God mixed with the daughters of humans. How are we doing that today? How are we mixing today? Every time we let a satanic influence go in our minds. Can I be real with you? There was sometimes I was in church and I had a worldly song playing in my head. It's because the sons of God were influenced by the daughters of human. You can't entertain everything.
1 Samuel 16, verse 14. We're on Saul. Saul had disobeyed the Lord. He had gave a sacrifice that God did not approve. The Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Saul disobeyed God so long that the spirit no longer strived with him. And immediately, it's in the same verse, a harmful spirit from the Lord troubled him. We've been talking about Job today. You need to realize something. The only thing that's protecting your life, excuse me, the only person that's protecting your life, the only person that's keeping Satan from not entering you, from protecting you, from destroying you, is the Spirit of God. But what happens when the spirit leaves? There's nobody there to test this trial. He's gone. So Satan don't have to come to God and get approved. God's not out just step in your life. And so when the spirit tells you don't cheat on your wife when he's not there no more. Satan will cause you to do anything. When the Spirit is telling you these black boys mean no harm. But God's not there anymore. Gun them down. It's only the Spirit of God that will stop us from killing officers. But when he's not there no more. Keep playing and entertaining worldly things and you'll be there. Oh, I'll never kill anybody. The Bible says let the righteous be righteous and the wicked be wicked. There is no in between. There is no gray area. Let the righteous be righteous. You think you won't murder nobody? You think you won't persecute nobody? Heck, we already cussing out our own families. Let the Spirit of God lead. We'll be killing them. Check yourself. This is what happens when the Spirit of God leaves. And since they did, Romans 128, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. These people out here murdering folk. These people out here running in church killing folks. These people out here starting race wars. The spirit of God is not in them. It's another spirit that has taken over. Praise God for the Davids. In our story, right? In our story. This is, woo, I love it. In our story, Saul is troubled by a horrible spirit. I'm right? I'm right. They say, go find a man who can play the lyrics. It's just music. Can we call it music? You can't go get anybody. He's a man of valor. He's a man of war. He realizes, I'm either with you or against you. I'm going to eat at the table or I'm going to scatter. A man that knows 
he might lose his life. But he's a man of war. The Bible says that when David played this music, the harmful spirit, no, 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 Saul was refreshed and made well. And the harmful spirit departed. Saul, in this harmful spirit, he represents the world. David, this man of valor, he represents the church and God's people. The music, the music is the word of God and the ministry of healing. You want to see folk be healed? I need a David to stand up. You want to see young teens that look like us stop dying? I need a David to stand up. You want to see your community be drug free? I need a David to stand up. But is there a David anywhere? Because the church, we won't go. We too jacked up talking about who got on the most jewelry. We can't get along with each other. We backbiting each other. God is saying, is there a David anywhere? My people in the streets dying. And we in the church having Bible stuff. That's fine. That's fine. Let's pray. Let's have Bible study. But somebody got to get off these seats and go in the streets and take all that studying. Is there a David anywhere? Can I be real? Folk don't like church. Folk don't like church. Folk don't. Ruby, folk don't like church. Ain't nobody walking in here. to my car I dropped my ID and it somehow fell under the passenger seat and when the officer asked me for my ID I started to reach under my seat and he was like whoa whoa whoa, whoa what you doing I said I dropped my ID under the seat he was like brother don't ever do that he was like, what's your social security? The point of the story is, 
it could have been me. No criminal record, it could have been me. Never even been in jail for a traffic violation, it could have been me that was dead. And God forbid, we, you guys, if I die like that, God forbid you stayed in this church and did nothing. There were David anywhere. David came out of his comfort zone. Get the language. I wish I had the verse. They said, if you were here, go get David. He is with the sheep. <laughs> David was in the church, but he had to leave it that he may go heal Saul. Is there a David in the lighthouse? Is there a David in the house? What do you say? I think there is a David in the house. What do you say? I think there is a David in the house. You know, David was a man after God's own heart. Now, he was not a perfect man, was he? He was not. But he knew that the power to his goodness was not about himself. He knew it was about the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, when he was at his lowest end, what did he say? Take not your Holy Spirit from me. He understood that. And I think that there's some, some people in this auditorium this morning who understand that too. Because in and of ourselves, we're nothing. We can't be David's by ourselves. We can't. But we can be, if we trust in the Lord and the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can achieve His purpose. So I'm, I'm going to make a couple of appeals now. I'm trying to make this too personal. But the way the devil enters our minds is through the avenues of our minds. He doesn't beat us up or put us in chains. No. He enters through the avenues of our minds. What are the avenues of our minds? Sight, sound, taste, touch, smell. That's how he gets in our head. So I'm going to make an appeal now to the Davids that are in the house. And the Davids in the house know that in order to sustain themselves, they have to continually ask for more and more of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if, if you are struggling with sight, maybe you're looking at some things you shouldn't be looking at. This appeal is for you. Maybe if you're dealing with sound, listening to music you shouldn't be listening to, this appeal is for you. Maybe if you're eating the wrong things, this appeal is for you. And maybe you're touching the wrong things, this appeal is for you. And maybe even if you're smelling the wrong things, this appeal is for you. If any of those things apply to you and you're bold enough to admit it, I'm going to ask you to come on down now. feel like I should hog this mic, so I think this is a special moment. I'm going to ask any of the other elders who are here, if there's anything that's on your heart that you feel needs to be said now, come and take this mic from me and say it. to reach out to 
Yeah. <laughs>